I bought nine broken Xbox Elite Series 2 controllers just to see if I could fix them. Let's do this. This video is sponsored by BW100. Now the nice thing about this lot of nine controllers is they're all marked with what supposedly is wrong except for two of them. So we've got two marked with lots of wear. Let's take a look at them and see what they look like. Okay, so on this one, it looks like it's mainly dirty. Oh yeah, we got a lot of wear down in there. There we go. So somebody was jamming this thing in and out of there. Went a little too crazy. It still does work, but that's definitely a problem. So for now, we can sell this one as is. Probably, especially if I uh, cleaned it up a little bit, I think a lot of these marks and stuff will come out. I mean, for sure, a lot of this stuff here will come out. Yeah, all, a lot of this stuff will come off. So um, even if we don't have the parts to replace that back cover, we can still clean this one up and it'll still probably be worth a good amount of money. Let's check out the other one marked as lots of wear. This one is actually in much better condition. It's like kind of slimy and sticky though. It's like somebody put lotion on their hands and then played a bunch of games with this controller. So this definitely needs to be cleaned, but I think after cleaning, this one's not in too bad a condition. The analog sticks definitely are a little bit worn, but really not too bad. Let's look at some more. So this one came without a box. It was just loose in with all of these ones. So since I don't know what's wrong with this one, let's connect it up to a gamepad tester and see what the tester shows. So I just need to hook it into my computer. And there we go. So we got an RB button that does not press easily. I can go press it this much and it just doesn't show up on the screen at all. And it doesn't show up on the tester at all. If I press harder, then it does. But only harder kind of in the middle right here. So that's definitely a problem. The other one works fine. Okay, and we got a little bit of stick drift on the left stick right there. Not too bad at all. I'll show you what to do about that here in a minute. So for number three, we've got a little bit of a problem on the RB button along with some stick drift on the left analog stick. Number four also has no markings as far as what is wrong. This one is in pretty good condition. Definitely got some marks here, but not too bad. This one's actually in very good condition. Let's plug it in and see what we get on the gamepad tester. And for number three, I see absolutely no problems all the buttons work just fine. It vibrates fine, it charges. There's just absolutely no problems with it. So this one I'll put in the cleaning pile. So we have five more left and they're all labeled with what's wrong. This one has a faulty left stick. This one has a faulty A button. This one has a left stick that's faulty. Another one with the A button that's bad and another one with the left stick that's bad and the P1 that's bad. So first let's tackle all the ones that have faulty analog sticks. Anytime I get a controller and it has analog stick drift, I always try to clean it first just because a lot of these can be fixed, at least temporarily, just by a simple cleaning. The product I use for that is called BW100. BW100 is a great electronics cleaner, especially for things like controller analog sticks, because it can get right down into where the dirt and grime is and wash it out, and then it evaporates very quickly, leaving no residue. Another one of my favorite things about BW100 is that it is non-flammable. So you can use it for basically any electronics with no danger to yourself or the device. So what I'm gonna do to try and fix these analog sticks is we're gonna try BW100 on each one of them and see how many of them we can get fixed just by cleaning them. Now this is the one we just tested so we know that the analog stick is drifting, not a lot, but it's definitely drifting some. So what I'm gonna do is move the stick over until we can see a little bit of a gap there. Then I'm gonna spray some BW100 in there. Move it all around. And then just keep going. Now this may not be enough to get the BW100 down inside the analog stick where it needs to be. So most likely I'll need to take this top cover off, but I wanna try this first and just see if we can happen to get enough in there to clean it. Now the BW100 is going all down inside here on the board. And with a lot of cleaners, you kinda of have to worry about that because you don't want it getting on certain components, but BW100 evaporates so quickly 
that it's not a worry. It's also non-conductive, so even if it touches two things, it's not really supposed to. It doesn't really matter. Okay, let's plug it in and see if the stick drift is gone. I think it's still going to be there because I just can't really get down inside there very well without taking this top cover off. So you can see, I think it probably is a little bit better, but I think to really do a good job, I'm going to take this top cover off so we can really get down inside the analog stick. Yeah, it's not quite on the center after I do, after I spin it around like this. So now you can see why it's so hard to get the BW100 down into the analog stick from the top without this removed, because this piece kind of guards the whole thing. So with it removed, we can just spray it right down in there where it needs to be. So right down here is one potentiometer and right down here is the other. And those are the pieces we're trying to clean. And also just kind of giving the whole thing a general cleaning. A lot of times crumbs and dirt and debris and hair get down in these things and that can really gum them up. If you look closely, there's a little crack right there and right there and right there and right there. Those are two little two places that we can get this cleaner down in there. Okay, and with that done, let's plug it back in and see if that cleaning was enough to get this thumbstick to stop drifting for us. Okay, and you can see that it is now dead center. Is it dead center? So now you can see it is dead center. So BW100 fixed this analog stick. Let's move on to the next one and see if we can fix another just by cleaning. And here's number five. Let's test the left stick and see how much it's drifting. Oh yeah, so it'll barely move. So I'll move the left stick all the way over and it doesn't even go all the way. So this one I think is probably a faulty analog stick, probably a faulty potentiometer inside the analog stick, but let's open it up and try and clean it and just see what we can do. Also the right analog stick is drifting pretty badly as well. So both of these need some attention. These two analog sticks are very dirty inside. This one, it looks like the cover has been like hitting on the edge and kind of wearing it away right here. A little bit on this one too. So somebody's definitely abused these ones. Let's give them some cleaning and see what that'll do. I just spray BW100 in here very liberally and that just helps clear the whole thing of dust and hair and gunk. Let's see if that did anything at all. So if we're looking at the left stick over here, it was having a problem going that way and that way. So if we look here, that problem is solved. Let's take a look. Oh, the right stick is not working that well. Left stick. So without the top plate on, it's not, they're not gonna be really smooth going around that I would need the top plate on to really do that well. So the left stick, uh, it's still not amazing. It's definitely way better. The uh, up and down movement, the north and south movement, doesn't quite get all the way to the middle. Once I get this top plate on, then it'll also bounce back to the middle a little bit easier. But I think the right stick is probably just worn out and needs to be replaced. The left stick, actually mostly doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna put the top plate back on and just see if that helps with them bouncing back. So now we got a nice, a nice round curve here. Let's see how they do. So the right stick definitely shows a problem. I'm gonna try doing one more cleaning if one more cleaning doesn't get it fixed, then we'll just replace both analog sticks. And even after cleaning this controller yet again, it's still doing a similar thing on the right analog stick. The left one isn't nearly as bad, but it's also probably a little bit too much outside of the tolerance that it should be. So I'm gonna replace both of the potentiometers inside both of the analog sticks on this one. So I'll do that potentiometer replacement here in just a minute. Let's get these other two tested and cleaned and see if we can fix the analog sticks on these ones just with BW100. So here we go with number six. And the right analog stick looks pretty good. The left analog stick, however, definitely has a problem. All right, let's get it taken apart and give it a good cleaning. 
Now on this one, it was the back and forth axis that, that was having the main problem. So I'm actually gonna pry open this poten potentiometer just a little bit. Not enough to break anything, but just enough we can get more cleaner in there. There we go. Make sure it closes all the way. And then we'll do the cleaning. We'll do a little more. Okay, and here we go. All right, look at that. So now the back and forth is working fine. Same with north and south. So controller number six was fixed just with a simple cleaning with BW100. Let's move on to the last one that's got the left stick problem and see if a cleaning will fix that one. And here we go with number seven. Okay, and this one you can see when I push up, it takes a while to get all the way up. So let's give number seven a cleaning too, see if we can fix it. And I don't know how well this is coming across on camera. We got some hair in there. That can definitely cause a problem. Usually not so much in this part, but for sure if it gets down in the potentiometers themselves. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, pry it open just a little bit, not enough to break anything, but enough to get the BW100 down there a long ways. And I think that was the wrong one that I just put it in. That's fine, it's not gonna hurt anything to clean the other one. Let's go with this one. And I might as well clean the other one while we're in here. And let's put these back together, give it a test and see if that fixed it. Okay, so here's the left analog stick. Let's push up and see what happens. There we go, we got the full travel there. Got the full travel on the right stick. So the left analog stick and the right analog stick are both looking good. So number seven is now fully fixed. So we were able to fix three of four analog sticks just by using BW100. If you wanna pick up some for yourself so you can try it out on your controllers, I'll leave a link right in the description that'll take you right there. Let's move on to the more difficult repairs. So between cleaning analog sticks and the controllers that didn't have anything wrong, they just need cleaning, we've got five of the nine either fixed or don't really need to be fixed, just need cleaned. Let's move on to the four that need some more intense repairs. And we're gonna start with probably the most difficult one, number five that needs both potentiometers and both analog sticks replaced. Now that we have access to both analog sticks, we can get to work replacing these potentiometers. So what I'm gonna do is remove the solder from these three pins and these three pins, and then we'll be able to unclip the potentiometer from here and here. Then we'll be able to slide a new potentiometer in here. And then we just need to solder on these three pins and these three pins. Then we'll do the same thing on the other side. The fluid that I put on here is called flux and the flux just helps the solder flow. This right here is called solder wick. What this does is it just helps wick up the solder, any excess solder on the board. So I use this first so I could get as much solder off of those pins as I could. Now I do wanna note that usually when I go through and clean things like buttons and analog sticks, I usually let these controllers sit for a few days and then I go back through and test them again just to make sure that it's fully fixed. So I bought these controllers in a lot and they were marked as salvaged. But there are some times that the items aren't broken. It's just a matter of possibly them being dirty or maybe they were just mistested or something like that. So when you buy salvage items, usually you can count on things being broken, but sometimes you get lucky and get some things that aren't broken at all. And the first potentiometer has been replaced. It is looking good. It moves nice and free. So we got the first one done. Now I gotta do the other three. I'm not gonna show all of this on camera. It's all exactly the same as I just did. This new one is from a new analog stick and I just removed the potentiometer off of the new analog stick so I could put it onto this one. So now I'm gonna get the other three done and then I'll come back when it's done and we can have a look at how it looks. Well, that escalated quickly. Let me show you what I just did. So while I was working on getting this potentiometer off, there's a little component right here. I'm not actually sure what it was, but this little component right here, I accidentally pried against and broke off the board, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Then I got my hot air though, so I could put it back on the board. And even though I had this whole thing protected, I totally melted a piece of this potentiometer on the inside right down in there. Normally this wouldn't be a big deal, but unfortunately these are special potentiometers 
for the Xbox Elite Series. I don't have any extras of these. This part in the middle is metal and it's not just a, a normal analog stick that I have sitting around here. So unfortunately, I can't fix this one because I don't have the replacement analog stick. At least right now, this is gonna be a parts controller that I use to fix others if needed. I totally messed up on this one. I'm usually more careful with hot air. This time, I just wasn't, and so just a mistake on my part. And now I have a parts controller just because of one little mistake. But that's how it goes. Let's move on to the next controller. Next, let's have a look at number nine where the A button is bad. And the A button is actually working fine. If you watch here and then watch right over B0 right here, that goes to one and it shows up right on the picture here. So A button is working absolutely fine. Actually, all the buttons are working fine. There's absolutely no problem with this controller. Even the P1 through P4 on the bottom are all working fine, so other than a little uh, cleaning, this controller actually works just fine. Let's move on to controller number three where the RB button is faulty. When we press the RB button like this, it just doesn't register at all. I have to press right here in order for the button to register. So let's get this taken apart and have a look at it. So this is the part that you press. This is the actual button on the board. So when we press just like this, it doesn't register up on the screen. Oh, now it is, of course. Oh. So when we press lightly, it doesn't register, whereas the other one will register every single time. So I think what we might do is first try cleaning this button. Let's see if some BW100 will work for this. I'm actually gonna put it up on its edge. So then hopefully the BW100 can get down inside this button. These buttons are kind of sealed up. Not totally sealed, but a little more than some other styles of buttons, so. I'm gonna do that and then press it a whole bunch of times and hopefully hopefully clean that button out. Okay, so I've cleaned this button several times, pressed it a whole bunch of times. Let's check and see how responsive it is up on the screen. So I'm gonna press it just very gently, but let's do it a bunch of times in a row and just make sure that it doesn't miss any. Yep. That's getting it every single time. So the RB button is registering every single time, no matter how lightly I press on the button. So controller number three is all fixed. Let's move on to the next one. Number eight says the A button is bad. Let's check this one and see if the A button is actually bad. Okay, so this one, if I press very lightly, Sometimes it won't register. It'll only register for just a just a split second. Oh, now it's not doing it. Yep. So it kind of misses every few seconds. I think this is probably either a dirty button or dirty context, but we got to get this thing all the way apart in order to look at that board. So now with that top cover off, we have access to this A button and there's a little bit of space between the A button and the case. So we should be able to get some BW100 down there. So let's try that and see if that works to get it working. Okay, and let's see if that fixed it. Okay, I'm gonna press the A button very lightly and I think we have it fixed. It's showing up for every press, both on here and over where it says B0. So controller number eight is also all fixed. There's two others we need to look at. Let me show you which ones. So with number seven, the left analog stick was fixed, but I forgot we also need to fix the P1. So let's take a look at this one. Yeah. So when I just press it a little bit, there's just nothing there. I had to press it really hard to get it to work. But when I just press it a little, just nothing. So we got to get this torn all the way apart so we can take a look at the back case. That's where the board is that has P1 on it, so let's do that now. And that would be this guy right here. All the contacts look good. So let's remove this little board and have a look at the board and buttons themselves. Okay, so it looks like that part all works fine. So I'm guessing that means there's a problem on this little board. 
So P1 is this button right here. I'm gonna peel this sticker off and then let's have a look at the board itself. These type of buttons are pretty simple. Basically just a metal piece attached to kind of like a sticker. And that metal piece just makes contacts with two contacts on the board. Okay, and there we go. I don't see any problems there. That all looks pretty good. I'm gonna clean it anyway and then we'll reinstall it. We'll see if we can figure out what might be going on here. Just using some IPA and a Q-tip. And I'll do the same thing here. Just gonna be really careful here. I don't wanna get too much IPA on the adhesive. And that looks good. Yeah, those buttons are nice and nice and uh, responsive how we need them to be. So, those well, should be fine. Next, I'm gonna clean these buttons really well and clean out the little button holes there too, just to make sure we get good responsiveness from the buttons as well. Buttons feel nice and clicky. So let's put it back together enough to test and see if that fixed it. So now with the cleaning done on that button, let's see how it reacts. I'm putting very light pressure. Uh, we still get nothing with really light pressure. With a little more pressure, we get it. But all the other buttons just takes very light pressure. They're also more clicky. This button is not that clicky. But I'm not sure, it might be a problem with this paddle itself, possibly. I don't see any problems with it though. But I have an idea we can try. That controller that I broke when I was trying to fix it, that's got good parts in it. So let's try and take that little button board and install it into this controller and see if that'll fix it. So here we have the back case from the controller that I broke. I'm gonna start actually by putting this back case on the controller and see if that'll fix it. That'll tell us whether it's this board or whether it's that paddle. Just like that. Now we can give it a test. And pressing very lightly on the B1 button. And there we go. It seems to be the little button board. Okay, so we'll swap the button board from this back case into the original back case for this controller. Then we'll see if that'll work. So replacement and original. Okay, now let's see what happens when we plug it in to test it. Okay, so after replacing that button board and the button, I'm gonna press P1 gently and let's see what happens. Oh, same thing. When I press it hard, it registers. When I press it lightly, it does not. So that only leaves one thing left that it could be. I'm thinking maybe this paddle itself is maybe bent or worn down. So let's have a look at the paddle See if we can figure out if there's something wrong with it. So this is the paddle that was in it. Here's the replacement paddle. Uh, I think I maybe I see what the problem is. So this little bump right here is what connects with the actual button. This bump looks like it's like not as bumpy as this bump. This one looks like it protrudes out a little bit. So let's install this into the controller and see what happens. Okay. Now with that new paddle in, let's see what happens. I'm gonna press P1 lightly. Ah, uh, there we go. It's also a lot more clicky. So after all that work, it was only a problem with the paddle itself. But the good news is that we got another one working. There's only one more we need to look at. I'll show you what it needs. So do you remember back to number one that had the back casing that was damaged? Well, since somebody messed up fixing one, I've got an extra back case, so let's put this back case onto this controller so we can fix another one. So this right here is the problem. This back case is just all chewed up where these paddles go in. So I'm gonna get this thing apart, get this back cover off and replace it with a good one. And out with the old and broken and in with the working back cover. And we might as well give it a little bit of a cleaning while we're in here. Yeah, definitely needs it. Okay, and that one is now looking pretty good. Let's put the paddles in, make sure they still work good. Yep. Yep, so this back case works much better. These are all fixed up. So now this one is totally fixed. 
so I was able to fix eight out of the nine broken Xbox Elite Series 2 controllers. If you want to see a video I made where I tried to fix a bunch of Xbox Elite Series 1 controllers, I'll put that video up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see how many of those I could fix. Thank you again to BW100 for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in buying some for yourself, you can go to the link right in the description and it'll take you right there. Thank you so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.